So today we're going to cover a really common question that we get asked quite a bit in the shop and that's how to adjust the draw weight on your compound or your recurve bow. So if we start off with a compound, first thing I want to go over is when you're adjusting draw weight of a bow, it's controlled by the limbs or the limb bolt. There's a common misconception in archery when people are getting started where they think that the thickness of their string will change the power of the bow. It won't. On a compound, your strings can vary it slightly, but the main adjustment you're gonna get is either by physically changing these limbs or by moving this limb bolt here, in or out. So the closer you push these limbs or this limb pocket to the riser, the heavier it'll make your bow. The further you bring this limb bolt out or away from the riser, the lighter it'll make your bow because you're taking compression off of the limbs. Now, depending on the brand of bow, the amount of adjustment they have will vary. A lot of your flagship, like Hoyt, uh, Matthews, some of the elites will only have kind of 10 pounds adjustment in the actual bow itself. And if you want to go over that, then it's a different set of limbs. Some bows like PSE can have up to 40 pounds of adjustment in the one set of limbs. And a lot of that is dictated by the amount of compression on the limbs and how long this bolt here actually is. Now it's important when you're adjusting your bow that you actually check if you're going to be moving the bolt out, so reducing the weight, how far out you can bring that bolt. Because there comes a point where this bolt runs out of thread, and if this is under tension and we keep winding that and the thread pops out, these limbs are going to come out of the pocket. Now we don't want that for a number of reasons, it's unsafe, if it hits you it's going to hurt, and we don't want to damage the bow. So it's really important to look at the manufacturer's recommendations before you start mucking around if you're going out more than say one or two turns from factory. Now factory setting on most of these bows is gonna be the limb bolt wound hard in against the riser to get the maximum amount of compression on the limbs. So to change that, we take an Allen key, this bolt here, put the Allen key in the bolt. If you wanna go up in poundage, we turn the bolt clockwise. If you wanna go down in poundage, we turn the bolt anti-clockwise. Pretty straightforward. When you're adjusting it, whatever you do to the top, you want to do to the bottom. So tiller is the measurement between where these limbs hit the riser back to your shoot string. And we want to keep that the same on the top and the bottom of your bow. Generally more critical on recurve, but we'll cover that in a little bit. So the easiest way to keep that the same is to count. So if I'm putting this uh, Allen key in the bottom limb bolt here, I might count one half turn, a bit about there or one full turn, we'll be back to my starting point on the other side. Now, if you get stuck, say you go out a bunch of turns and you forget how far you've moved it, you can just crank the limb bolts in hard up against the riser again and then start winding them back out because that's kind of like your factory reset, these limbs hard up against the riser. So if you get stuck, you can always go back to that. Another good trick is if you take a Sharpie and you're just gonna draw on the limb bolt, a little line. It's very faint, I don't know if you're actually gonna be able to see that. There's no paint pens here. Yeah, it's probably too faint, but essentially what I've drawn is a Sharpie line on the limb bolt back into the pocket. So then as I rotate that, I can see if it's moved left or right. And some of those it's not, it's not very common, but some bows, when you get them new, will take a little while for that limb bolt to kind of settle and they might come loose and that might change. So this gives you a good factory setting to go back to having that mark on the bolt. And that's something you can do with the recurve as well. Do these both have to be exactly the same? Not really. Some people for tuning will actually offset one limb more than the other, or sorry, one limb pocket rather than the other limb pocket. Uh, there's a type of tuning called tiller tuning where people would have a heavier bottom limb or a top limb depending how they wanted their aim to feel um, and depending what kind of sight picture they were looking for. So it's not critical to have these the same, it's just a good starting point for tuning and setting up a new bow, just so you're not introducing any extra inconsistencies when you're trying to set up a bow. If we grab a recurve, it's fairly similar on the recurve. Again, whatever we do to the top, we do to the bottom, but on the recurve, we have a locking screw in the back of the riser here. So before we do anything to this limb bolt on the front, we have to unlock this bolt at the back. So we pop our limb bolt in, loosen it up, and that will allow us to bring that in or out just like we did with the compound. 
Now, recurve tillers a little more, I won't use the word critical, but more measured, I guess. It's something that's kind of talked about a bit more on the recurve scene. It's the same thing with the compound, where the limbs meet the riser. Chuck an arrow, and we're gonna measure back to the string, like that. So you can see, that's our bottom tiller. The top tiller, the string is marginally closer to the bow. Generally speaking, for a recurve, archers will set the tiller higher on the bottom limb. So when I say higher, the string will be closer to this point here, which means there's more poundage or more draw weight in the bottom than there is in the top. A couple of reasons why the most common kind of theory is that when you're pulling back a recurve, you've got three fingers, two fingers pulling underneath the arrow, one above. So it kind of balances out your limbs. I've always run my recurves with a static tiller. So the top and the bottom are exactly the same. I just find that easier if anything comes loose, if I'm adjusting draw weight, then I've got a really easy point to go back to. A bit more precise than using an arrow, you can use a bow square or a T-gauge. So that will just kind of sit in there and then you can actually read uh, to the string. So that's saying I'm about 18 on the top. Yeah, about one or two segments difference on the bottom. So you can use yeah, a T-gauge or a bow square if you're wanting to measure it. This is good as well because you can clip it on and use it to check your brace side knocking point, that kind of stuff as well. So that's pretty much it with adjusting your draw weight. A couple of things you'll find when you do this to a recurve, you're obviously putting more energy into the arrows. So your arrows are going to start to react softer because you're making them flex more in flight. Out of the compound, you're probably not going to see a whole lot of difference with your left to right group, but you're going to be gaining a little bit more speed, so your arrows will generally shoot higher. Recurve, they'll tend to shoot a little bit higher as well. So it's something that you don't need a whole lot of tools to start with if you're wanting to kind of experiment with it. Like I was showing you before, you can just use an arrow or literally a ruler to measure your, um, your tiller. Or you can get one of these bow squares to make it a bit easier. I find it's good to have um, a kind of handle Allen key like that. So one, if the bolts are really tight, you can get on them a bit easier. The second thing is when you're turning it, it's very easy to see what position you've turned your limbs to. Whereas if you've got an Allen key like this, it's kind of like there's a bit of slack in it. So it's easy when you're rotating it to not quite get the same on the top or the bottom. That's pretty much all you need for it. It's a set of Allen keys, some kind of ruler. Um, you can also get both scales if you're wanting to know what your draw weight is. So a really popular one, that's probably down here. This is the one we use in the shop. So this is the older model of the last chance. It's an HS2. Now they've now got a HS3 as well. So basically with this, you just clip it on the string, pull back. Cool thing about this is with compound, it'll tell you your peak weight and your holding weight. So that's really handy. Recurves obviously is your peak weight. You can get kind of spring scales as well, and then just you physically pull them back and the spring will measure the tension. They're not particularly accurate unless they're wall mounted. So they're mounted on a wall and you're pulling the bow straight down, it's a lot easier to measure. If you pull back with your hands, you twist it or torque it slightly, you can skew the results eight pounds, 10 pounds either way. So your digital ones are really good. The one thing I would say is to avoid any of the 10, $20 eBay knockoff scales, because um, it's very easy to just have a cheap plastic digital scale, pull your bow back, the hook comes out and you've dry fired your bow. And it's not worth it to say $40, $50 on a scale um, versus the cost of repairing your bow. So if you are gonna be measuring with the scale, get something like a last chance. So it's got a brand name behind it. And then that way you've got confidence that when you're checking, you're not gonna worry about your scale failing. And that's how to change your draw weights on a compound and a recurve bow.